Good morning, I'm Miss Kirsten, and today we're going to keep learning about the journey of the early church, and we're going to see what God has in store for these early Christians. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for bringing us through another week. Thank you for guiding us and loving us every step of the way. We pray that we can show your love to others every day and share the good news of Jesus. We pray for this lesson and that we can learn something new about you. Amen. So the story today can be found in the Bible. And it's in the book of Acts chapter 9. The Bible is God's word. And God's word is true. So everything in the Bible is true. So last week we learned that Jerusalem was becoming a dangerous place for people to preach about Jesus. And many of the apostles were traveling to different cities to spread the truth of Jesus Christ. So today we're going to learn about one of the people that persecuted Christians, Christians are followers of Jesus Christ, and how God changed this man's life around. Let's begin with the story. Okay. The conversion of Paul. A short time had passed since Jesus' death and resurrection. The gift of the Holy Spirit given at Pentecost resulted in the growth of the church in size and in influence. By now, the news about Jesus was spreading far and wide. The good news that he died, rose again, and returned to heaven. Disciples were traveling all around Israel, proclaiming the gospel. The church was growing, lives were being changed, and joy was overflowing. But the Christians faced a serious danger. They had enemies. The Pharisees, religious leaders, and others absolutely hated Christians. These were powerful and zealous men. They were the ones who had tried to put an end to Jesus's life. And they also had killed other apostles like the apostle named Stephen. And they were now putting believers in jail. Saul, a leader among this group of Jesus haters, was the Christian's worst enemy. He was a Pharisee. He was trained in the law strict in his standards and unstoppable in his violent actions towards Christian Christians. His passion in life was to squash the message of Jesus and put as many Christians in jail as he could. Many Christians were very afraid of Saul. He traveled the country, sniffing out their meetings, capturing their leaders, and persecuting the followers. Saul was a powerful, and evil force against the church. But Jesus was not afraid of Saul. He had a plan for Saul's life. What happened next, nobody expected. Not the fearful Christians, and especially not Saul himself. What happened to Saul would change the course of history. Saul was on a trip to a city called Damascus. He was traveling on a horseback with a group of others on a hot and dusty desert road. All of a sudden, a blinding light, many times brighter than the sun, shone from heaven. The searing intensity blinded Saul, and he fell from his horse as the caravan stumbled to a confused halt. Saul crumpled onto the sand, shocked and blind. Then a voice louder than anything that Saul had ever heard boomed from heaven with a single question. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul whimpered humbly in response. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Get up and go into the city and you will be told what you are to do. 
He shakily stood to his feet, unable to see anything. In an instant, Saul had met God. His persecuting days were over. He was forever changed. His fellow travelers helped Saul reach the place where God told him to go, the house of a Christian who lived in Damascus. Saul did not eat or drink, but instead he prayed and prayed and prayed. God told a disciple named Ananias to visit Saul. Ananias was afraid. I've heard about this man. He persecutes Christians. But God responded with the shocking news about Saul. Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Ananias went to the house and cautiously met Saul, who was stunned, blinded, and humbled. Brother Saul, Ananias said to him, Jesus sent me to you so you can be healed and filled with the Holy Spirit. Saul's eyes were opened and his heart was changed. He was called by a different name too. No longer was he Saul the persecutor. Now he was Paul the missionary. And from that point onward, Paul's passion was to proclaim the name of Jesus, to plant churches, and to spread the good news of Jesus wherever he went. Paul would suffer deeply, including going to jail, being stoned, having a shipwreck, getting beaten, and being in riots, homelessness, and pain. But through the power of God, he carried the gospel of Jesus far beyond the small country of Palestine and into the vast reaches of the Roman Empire. So what can we learn from this story? First, thankfulness. We should be thankful that despite our flaws and fears and failings, God chooses us to spread his word and glorify his name. The all-powerful God of the universe does not need our help. He has chosen our help. No matter what, God loves us. And that is something to be very thankful for. Second, hopefulness. Saul was the best at hunting down Christians to persecute and put in jail. But when he was confronted with the power and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, his heart changed and embraced the truth. This man, whose mission it was to stomp out Christianity, was one of God's most vocal supporters now. And such stories can give us hope that those who don't yet believe in Jesus can be saved. So even if a person has made many mistakes in their life and turned away from Jesus, it is never too late for them to turn their life around and God can use them for incredible things, just like he did with Saul. So our Bible verse for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 15. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Even though Saul had worked hard to persecute Christians, God chose him to spread his name to the world. And God chose us. God thinks we are valuable tools to do his important work. And like we learned last week, sometimes following God's plan is hard, but God always gives us the tools we need to finish the task. 
sometimes it's hard to talk to people we love about Jesus and how he can transform lives. And if you're afraid and you don't know the right words to say, just say a quick prayer to God, asking him to help you find out what to say, and he will give you just the right words. So sometimes God simply calls us to pray for others. And that's something that you can do anytime, anywhere. And guess what? You don't even have to close your eyes. Here's a game to try this week. And we have done this idea of a game in past Zoom lessons, but it's fun if you haven't done it yet. It is an obstacle course. You're going to create a safe obstacle course in your home and blindfold a family member and guide them through it. It may be hard to follow instructions when you can't see, but that is what it's often like when we follow God's plan, even when it's difficult for us. So to end this lesson, we're going to pray in closing. Let's close our eyes. God, thank you for your word today. And thank you for never giving up on us. Help us to keep praying for those who need to be saved and keep loving them no matter what. We pray for the week ahead and we ask for the protection of our loved ones and the entire world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So remember that God loves you and we can have hope for our friends and family members that do not know Jesus. This week, just start by praying for someone in your life to come to know Jesus. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.